Hi everyone and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Trading. My name is Michael. I hope you had a great weekend. We certainly had a great weekend. We went down to uh, San Diego for a wedding. Anytime that you can stand in the ocean with your shoes off and your tie on, I think you can say that you won the wedding. So we had a lot of fun doing that. On the show today, we're doing uh, Mad Money's lightning round review. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And if you enjoy the show, as always, please subscribe. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, let's get things started off with VMware, VMW. Kramer says, I wish I could help you. It seems they've decided to sacrifice VMware so that they could get the deal done with uh, EMC and Dell. He thinks that it's due for a bit of a uh, bounce back, but he overall can't recommend it because he be believes that people are going to pull it back down. Uh, if we look at the chart, we see that there's a huge gap down. We're headed towards this lower support line here, which is the lowest low that we've had in just over three years uh, and basically an emotional support line. If it were to break that, then kind of all hell will break loose. I expect a bit of a bounce back there, like Kramer says. It should hit and then come back. We also have oversold RSI. But if we look at the stochastic, we see this nice support line and this descending uh, pattern, this descending wedge. So it's probably going to keep hammering in between these lines for the short term uh, and then resulting in kind of a ping-ponging in here. Uh, it's not, it has no reason really to rise. There's nothing in the chart that says it. And there's a big danger that it falls through that emotional line and keeps going. So um, warning signs abounding. All right, next up is Merck with a mouth, M-R-K. Merck, the stock that calls you names. Uh, no, it's actually a medical stock. Kramer says you have to hold it. It's down 10% for the year and it yields 3.5%. Unfortunately, there's no catalyst to bring it up. Uh, so he has really no reason to promote it. He thinks it's being dragged down by association to other stocks like Eli Lilly. So he needs a catalyst. He needs a spark in the relationship. Uh, if I look at the chart, I say, yeah, it could use a spark too. Uh, it's had this really prolonged, nice uptrend, and now it's um, tapered off. Uh, but there are some nice positives in this tapering off. So it pinged off the 38 percentage line for a Fibonacci retracement, and it rebounded in the same week above two other support lines. So that's really positive when you have a nice, um, that you ping off one support line and you resume over another. It then held uh, that those two support lines for another two weeks. Uh, and in this week, it had a, a bullish engulfing candle where it gobbled up some of the previous negativity, uh, full volume and uh, above average volume overall, all of which are very positive things. It may not be rebounding fully in the short term, but it should be at least stable. Uh, if I were to look at the trend overall, I would say that after this long trend, we might have a kind of stabilization period where it forms the base of a cup and then it may increase and then form the other edge of the, edge of the cup forming a uh, cup and handle pattern eventually. So that's a positive trend. Uh, we may just have to wait a while for it. So keep an eye on Merck. Three and a half percent is pretty good. Whole Foods, WFM, Kramer says, I think this might be the last bad quarter and there's like 10% more downside, but a lot more upside. Uh, so he thinks you should wait until the quarter results come out, wait till it falls a bit and then pull the trigger. Uh, I think there's definitely a lot of downside, potentially more than 10% really. 10% would take us down to this 30 mark, which is a pretty reasonable value. Uh, it would bounce off this support line but i think uh there's an opportunity for it to really trace this uh, kind of emotional barrier of uh 25 and a bit which would be the last uh the lowest low for the uh for the last few years uh similar to the stock before so uh if you do like whole foods personally i think their store is kind of weird and i don't think they broke that mentality that they are for the rich or the crazy uh in terms of health conscious uh, i don't think that broke that mold so i don't know what their results are going to be like i definitely can't imagine positive so yeah look out for it Tableau software symbol data otherwise known as the best Star Trek generation character although I guess Picard was pretty awesome as well uh, Kramer said this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with an overbought market this company is doing incredibly well but the stock is regarding as being way too expensive so therefore we are going to say that this one trumps conviction and we're going to let it come down yeah we're gonna let it come down more because it's been cratering off of this is where it was actually overbought I don't understand you, sir. Your ticks and talks, sir. Don't make much sense to me, sir. I don't understand you, Mr. Fox, sir. 
Um, yeah, it's come down a ways already. In fact, it plowed through this support line, which is never a good sign, particularly since that was the support line of the uptrend. It then um, had to uh, maintain support against this line and now can't break through that original support line, which is now a resistance. So yeah, it may have been overbought before, uh, and it's not been able to uh, get back into that market, but it's certainly not in that same context of overbought anymore. Uh, now it's at a much more reasonable price. I don't see any reason to say that it's going to suddenly take off and go back into that world, um, but it's certainly, uh, yeah, heading towards probably another downtrend. So keep an eye on it. But some of those comments about overbought just didn't make a lot of sense. Opco Health. Kramer says, I thought that CEO Dr. Phil Frost, when he came on, acquitted himself well, and I think this stock is a buy right here, right now. I'm not afraid to stick my neck out for Phil Frost. He's made so much money for people. Um, that is a bold statement, particularly for a stock under $10. Those are not typically my play area. Um, and I don't see a big reason to say, hey, let's get into this stock um, because of this dramatic plummet. I mean, it's lost pretty much half of its value since June, which is a scary amount of money. If uh, Jim Cramer is coming out and vouching for the CEO, presumably has some sort of plan for a turnaround, but there's no way for us to guess that on a charting level. So evaluate your fundamentals. If you believe in it, then uh, then it might be an entry point, but I'm hands off. Himex Technologies, H-I-M-X. Kramer says, I think it will be a forever flat. There's really not much there. Even when Maxim is talking about merging with analog devices, when we're hearing about Fairchild for sale, this doesn't. This thing doesn't move? Uh, what does that tell you? It says you don't want to be a part of it. Uh, <laughs> it's not often that you hear Maxim and the words forever flat in the same sentence together. Uh, but if we were to look at this stock, we would definitely say, Forever flat, this is a perfect symmetrical triangle pattern. Presumably these those two lines will tighten at some point to the point where we'll be forced to move either up or down. Uh, and if you're available at that time and there's a lot of uh, volume, then you can catch the ride, uh, similar to what you would want if you had Maxim and not a forever flat. So enjoy. Rite Aid, rad. Kramer says, Rite Aid has been a one-way ticket down. I recognize that ever since that same store sales month, it has to be able to put two good same store sales numbers together before it starts rallying again. Whew, that's a tongue twister. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm abandoning it. It means he may even be buying it, uh, which is, uh, yeah, that's what I would say, actually. It's in this nice upper uh, wedge pattern, but the RSI looks to be heading towards oversold. Uh, we're at the lower end of the trend. And I would say that even though it's kind of a, an escalating wedge, which means higher highs and higher lows, um, we've only had the second touch on it there on the downside. Uh, and we also have a pretty oversold uh, weekly stochastic as well that looks for a rebound. So I would say it would probably hover around here maybe next week or this coming week, I should say, uh, and then maybe take a bit of a, of a recovery, uh, probably up to $7 or so. Um, so yeah, a decent entry point. Again, not my sandbox below $10. Uh, I don't know what was up with the lightning round this week. Box Kramer says, I saw Aaron Levy, CEO, just bought 15,000 shares. I mean, look, he's a rich guy, but you don't buy a stock if you believe it's going to go down. You believe it's ultimately going to go up. That's his philosophy on insider buying. Shares are at $12, and it seems kind of cheap. Uh, looking at this stock, there really isn't a lot of information to go on. It's obviously punched through this limited support line that it had um, and has fallen quite a ways. A little bit of a recovery, and that's nice. Uh, for me, I believe Box is the, the maker of like Dropbox and just like cloud storage. And anyone, anyone can take that out and away from you when you think about it. Google's done it, Amazon's done it, and they have the capacity to uh, really undercut you on your pricing. So this doesn't seem like a viable business over the long haul, although they did get sort of a jump start on the market. So that would be my concern. FireEye, F-E-Y-E. -E. Kramer says, I think that FireEye has come down too much to not want to buy it. It was recommended today by a firm, and I think the numbers are good there. Palo Alto is not cheap. Firefly is relatively. And I would say that, yeah, it's actually at a pretty good point in its pattern for you to consider buying it. Um, we have an RSI that's nearing oversold values. It's at the lower end of its pattern and ultimately towards the lower end overall of its price. Uh, stochastics are into oversold territory. Uh, as well as the money flow index and ultimate oscillators headed at that direction as well. I could maybe see like another week of rest or two because the market as a whole is kind of overbought, 
But um, yeah, there are some potential entry points here. So FireEye, uh, technology and software company, think about it. All right, last one of the day, Horizon Pharma, HZNP, I really want to say that as a Z. Uh, Kramer says, we have to have Mr. Walbert, CEO on. It's involved in a takeover and there are some drug pricing issues and we have, we'll find out what the deal is when he comes back. While we're waiting, we can wait for it to fall a bit more, uh, which I expected to do. It's obviously uh, had a massive downtrend here. It's uh, going to come back and it's going to test this line again for sure. While we're waiting for all this apparent news, it's going to come out. Uh, it could, with some volume though, push through even farther and head towards this support line. If it did and that news was positive, that would be a good entry point for sure to look into. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did and you enjoy the series as a whole, please subscribe. Uh, there's lots of interesting videos going on, but this one happens every week coming out Sunday night. So uh, talk to you later. So hope to see you again.